Hello and welcome to today's JavaScript tutorial. Today we are going to make a very simple pop-up model like so. So if I click on pop it up, you can see this model and you can see also the background has become blurry. And if I click on this one, it goes away. If I do it again, and if I click outside this model like here, it also goes away. It's very simple. So let's just see how we can do this. So I'm going to use codepen.io and here for the HTML part, I'm going to create first the button that you just saw with a class button, the class of pop. So we have button class pop and inside that, let's just say pop up. Like so, we have this ugly button now. Under this button, <clears throat> let's have our um, modal text. So something like uh, this. So we're going to have this. That is, it's going to be dot modal. So we're going to be, it's going to be a div with a class of modal. <clears throat> and inside that, we have a button again, with, let's call it close or just, I don't know, X for instance. So the button with a class of X and what it is, it's going to be an HTML entity at like, I uh, no, ampersand times a semicolon. And that gives us an X like so. And then underneath this, let's just have I don't know, an H3, which says this is model. And under this, let's have P tag with some lorem ipsum, like 10 words there. And like this. Okay, so we have this already. But be, yeah, beneath it, uh, we also need a overlay. Why an overlay? So let's just give it a class name of overlay and nothing in it. So this is it. You can see this overlay thing here. That is this blurry uh, background um, color. <clears throat> so this is going to be our overlay. That whenever someone clicks on pop it up, what act what gets activated is both this uh, mo model and also the overlay thing. So we need to hide them first. That is the default situation should be that the model and the overlay are hidden. So let's give them a class, like here for the modal, another class of hidden, and also for the overlay, another class next to it, <coughs> like hidden. So that's it for our HTML. Now let's go to our CSS and style them. So let's go for the body first, and we're going to uh, have a background color. So I'm going to use CSS gradient.io to and generate a um, gradient. So let's just copy this here. You can also generate different gradients by different colors. For example, you can choose, I don't know, this primary color for the blue, you can go and choose red, for instance, and you can see it gives you these different gradients. And then the, the code is here, so you can simply copy it. And I'm going to paste it inside the body. And you will see this gradient is given. Okay, now that we have that, let's also uh, style pop, that is our button, because it's a class name pop, so we need to have a dot before it. Let's start by giving it padding, there is some spaces from this, around this text. Let's say 10 pixels from top and bottom, and 15 pixels uh, from left and right, so like that. And let's give it also a border color, the border, let's say one pixel solid white. And the border radius, we are going to give it some rounded corners. So border radius is going to be 25 pixels. And you can see it's rounded now, much better. Yeah, let's give it more uh, padding right and left. Okay, good. Now let's get to our modal part here. So that was dot modal. That was a class name. And uh, let's give it a background color for, for now. Background color. And the background color is going to be white. Good. But you can see that there is no space, you know, uh, before these. They're so close to the border. So we need to give it some padding. Let's just give it one rem padding. And you can see now better. Uh, what else? So let's also give it some, um, what is it? 
uh, yeah so this is too wide so maybe we can decrease the width to I don't know 15 rem okay better now we need to position it in the center of the text in the center of the body so in relation to the body we want it to be in the center that is why we position it a relative uh, absolute so that we can move it around but how let's say from the top we want it to be 50% down 50% down from the left we want it to be 50% to the left but this is not good because this is the point now that is taken as reference so this is 50% from the top and 50% from the left but we want the whole thing to be here so for that we need to use transform and we're going to translate that is move them minus 50 percent and minus 50 percent so this way it is right in the middle cool now everything is okay here but let's deal with the this close button now we need to put it here so this one now needs to be also positioned as absolute so that it moves around this area so that would be dot x and the dot x is going to be positioned as absolute you can see changes now the top from the top the distance should be zero that it should be attached to the top and also from the right the same so let's say right zero as well so now cool it's here but we don't need any background color so background color is going to be well transparent and also the border we need and don't need any border well we can also say one I don't know uh, pixel solid white as well we can also say it's something like that um, one pixel oops one pixel solid white yeah it just happened and you can see there might be some I don't know something here or no yeah so the better thing is to actually leave it out so let's just say border I don't know none for instance now there is no border but let's increase the size of it so font size is going to be one and a half rem okay now much better and if we can give it a color red for instance if we want it to be a red okay everything is looks really good already now how about our um, overlay so dot overlay the overlay is going to be also positioned as absolute because we want it to cover everything we want it to be here so let's position it as absolute and let's say uh, top zero no difference from the top from the left also no space from left but now we need to know uh, what color we should give it so the color we should give it is going to be RGBA so back ground color is going to be RGBA that is red green blue alpha so that would be zero 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 which is all black and the opacity would going to be six something like that let's see oh we don't have any uh, height and width actually so let's give it a width of 100 percent and also height of 100 percent and now let's see what happens you see awesome so we have this uh, opacity uh, this dark thing there but we need to it to blur it actually so for blurring this we can use backdrop filter back drop filter and we are going to use the blur property and uh, let's just use three pixels so now we can see the difference you see now it's blur awesome so now that we have this blur background the issue is that we want this card this model to be on top of this blurry thing so we need to give it a z index first and the only the other thing is that we need the overlay to be on top of everything else that is under this so let's give this is z index so z index is uh for yeah like like depth of things so let's just say five a random number but the modal now should have 
something more that is a z index of for example six now awesome all right so <clears throat> now that we have almost everything in place we need to um okay what we need to do is now actually activate the hidden class that we gave these look here we gave the overlay the hidden class and also the model the hidden class why because we don't want them to be like this we want them not to be there unless someone clicks on the pop-up button so we need to activate that hidden class hidden is going to be display none so by default the display is going to be oops none like this but when someone clicks on pop-up we need to remove this class from modal and overlay so that something like this happens you see and when someone clicks on this a button here or the overlay we should reactivate or add the hidden class like so and it will go away so now let's get to our javascript do we need anything else here i don't think so yeah <clears throat> okay javascript so in order to work um, with modals we need to grab all the relevant elements that we want so we need to have access to this pop button the modal uh, this x button and the overlay so we need to have access to these elements to have access to those elements we need to use document document dot query selector capital s and what is the element we want to have access to the first one is pop that is this button so let's assign it to a variable const pop equals now from now on whenever we refer to pop we refer to this button here that we've just grabbed now let's copy and paste this several times uh, for other things like for example for the uh, X button that is for X and like that also for modal for modal and the class of modal was also modal then we had overlay so overlay and overlay here as well so we have access to overlay modal the x that button that closes the uh, the modal and also the button that opens it up so we have access to these now now we are going to assign ad, um, event listeners imagine you assign someone uh, to open a door and you tell them listen whenever someone knocks on the door you open the door right so this is what we're going to do we say pop dot add event listener so we are assigning some event listener to pop to this button so what's going to happen whenever someone clicks whenever someone clicks do what let's say open that's it so whenever someone clicks we're asking the, our listener to open whenever someone clicks on pop open it open what that's why we need to define open now what is open it's a function so we say const open open is a function and that function is going to do what it's going to uh, remove the hidden class that you just saw from the modal and from the overlay so we say modal dot class list dot remove so we are going to remove one class from modal which class we are going to remove hidden no dot here we don't need a dot because this is a class anyways so we are going to remove the hidden class from modal and what happens if we remove it if we remove it it's just like you know uh, removing this one this happens you see so this is what removing it means and also let's do the same for the overlay because we want the overlay to be there as well we just need to change the modal overlay I remember we have access to modal here and we have access to overlay here 
that is this element. So let's review what happens. We are assigning something, an event listener, to our pop to this one. That is, we are telling it, listen, whenever something happens to pop, what? A click happens here, open it. Open what? This. Let's do that, you see? Happened, awesome, very easy. Now, we need to close it. Again, we need to assign an event listener to this button now, to the X. Whenever someone clicks on it, reactivate or add the hidden class back to these elements and hide them. So, let's do it here. Let's say, instead of pop, we need X now. So listen for x, uh, x dot event, oops, add event listener for a click. And when there's a click, do close. But what is close? Close the function we haven't defined yet. So we say const close equals function. And that function is going to, let's copy these two, modal you see modal class remove. Instead of removing it, now we need to add it. So we are going to add the hidden now. We just removed hidden before with clicking on pop. And now we are adding hidden to the modal and overlay again. That is, we hide them. So now if I click on pop and here, it should go away and it doesn't go away. Why? There must be some exactly some spelling mistake here add event listener okay let's do it again and you see goes away awesome and you see there is overlay as well now i want this to happen that whenever someone clicks on the overlay that is here this also closes down so i can have another event listener i can say hey listen to overlay now dot add event listener for a click listen for a click on an overlay and whatever happens close it and what is close again the same thing so let's do it again see goes away that was it very simple so you can simply use um i don't know some pointer as a cursor here so let's just say the x uh cursor going to be a pointer oops pointer and let's just save this and also go to pop yeah that's it so you see now there's an index finger here okay good that was it thank you very much for watching and listening